Hello, I'm out here today talking about 17th century optics. Much of the advancement of science has been through the use of optical devices, telescope, microscope, spectroscope being the main ones all developed or investigated in the 17th century. If we're going to do any ray tracing or analysis, the first thing to do is to draw an optical axis. This would be where the ray travels through the system without being bent in any way, shape, or form. Here is a convex with flat on one side and curved on the other. The first lens to look at is the convex. So we'll draw two inches there, two inches there. This would be one edge of the lens or the center of the lens, depending on the circumstances. and we have a convex lens. Put a plus up here to indicate that this is a positive lens. Ordinarily, when we're sketching, we treat the lens as if it were just a single line. We don't need that curve for the first approximation of what the lens does. So this lens has a focal length. In this case, we're going to go three inches. So our focal length is three inches. So we can put a mark there and we put a mark here. Now, the way this works is if a ray of light comes in parallel, that is from an extremely distant source, and strikes the lens, it will leave bent down to the focal point. So the image will focus the image of a point out here will focus on this point right here. We can do the same thing if a uh, a ray passes through the point, comes from some outside source and passes through the point, it will leave parallel. This is the essence of the positive or convex lens. Here is concave with flat on one side and curved on the other. This is a concave lens. We'll mark it with a minus. It's a negative lens. As you can see, 
dishes in in the center. Again, we don't normally do this. Draw that unless we're doing the more advanced sort of thing. You can get a good idea here of what it does. It has a negative focal length. So what that means is if a ray comes in like this and strikes that, we go to the opposite focal point. It's bent out that way. And if a ray comes through to this point, a ray comes in here like this, it will leave parallel. So the ray, as you can see, lines up with the negative focal point. And instead of going down, it goes up. We put a negative up there to indicate that this lens is a negative lens or a concave lens. Now we're going to make a magnifier. Draw the optical axis. Decide where the points are going to be. We're going to use a magnifier of one inch focal length. make it two inches high just to make it a little bit easier to work with. Okay. Now, if we want to find out how this magnifier works, let's take a point out here. Say right there. What is that? Let's get another, let's get another point. Let's get a better point. Let's do this one. Right. What we're going to do is a little trick. We're going to move that point, in this case, half an inch off the optical axis. Now this line running through the optical axis goes straight. And this line running parallel from this point hits that and goes through the focal length, focal point, like that. And now you can see the magnification. It's small on this side and bigger on this side. If we were to extend this, it would get even smaller here, even bigger here. So, in this case, our magnification here is half an inch, and here it's basically a quarter of an inch. And yeah, we'll do it this way. Is approximately two. Approximately two. Here is the Galilean telescope invented in the 17th century. Here we have a Galilean telescope. This is a positive lens and this is a negative lens, convex, concave. 
this distance from here to here is the focus focal length of this lens and also the focal length of this lens so here's how it works if I have something coming in here parallel it will be bent down to that point it will encounter this and because this is the focal point of this one it will leave parallel the ray stays on the same side of the optical axis it doesn't cross the image is not inverted this distance divided by this distance is the power of the system and this was Galileo's telescope easy for him to make and fairly reliable at low power here is the Keplerian telescope invented in the 17th century and we'll give it six inch focal length here and a one inch focal length there are both plus these are both convex lenses so now we have a ray coming in that ray the focal points are still the same so the ray comes down here crosses over the axis so this is an inverting telescope comes out parallel like that now you can see kind of the power here the power is actually because I did six inches here and one inch here this is a six power telescope inverting Kepler Now, we're going to do a microscope, go through the optical axis, go through this point here, come out parallel, go through the optical axis, through this point here come out here and that's our point so now we have about a quarter of an inch here over here we have about a sixteenth of an inch okay so we're getting Four power. Mirrors can also be made. The concave mirror acts like the convex lens, 
and the convex mirror acts like the concave lens. Now we want to look at what was called chromatic aberration or color fringing, if you like. And what this is, is the lens, instead of doing all lights equally, focuses some light at different focal points. So a Blu-ray, like so, I focus like so. And a red ray might not be bent as much. So the red ray I'd focus there. And the other colors will focus in between. And what this means is, if you look at this sideways, we're looking at the blue focus. The blue is a dot. And the red surrounds it, like so, because it's not at that focus. And if we move out, take the blue on down, So at this focus, it looks like that. And at this focus, we have the red dot surrounded by blue. This was a major problem. Now we're going to look at what's known as spherical aberration or spherical error. We're going to do it with a concave mirror, which as we know is like a convex lens. going to take a um, protractor and draw some radii. Okay. And that radius Forty-five degrees, so we can take the same angle 
here. And draw it down. And that's where our 45 degree point ray will focus. Now, we'll set this to get a, an idea of this, we'll set this on 30 degrees. strikes right there and will be reflected again at 30 degrees. And you can also already see a problem. These are coming from the same point they're not focusing on the same point here. 